guys. Thought I'd bring you along on the road today. Uh, just heading into the city to go to the local camera shop called Fotoforma. But I'm gonna be buying the Canon EOS R today. I did have the Canon EOS R, but it was just a loaner from Canon. But I liked it so much that I thought, hey, I'm gonna go pick up a camera body of my own just to get ready for wedding season as well for vlogging. Did you just ask where do I live? I live in Santa Cruz, Finland. It's kind of a small town, three or four hours north of Helsinki. You guys want to see what it looks like? Okay. Well, let me show you some drone footage. Today I want to talk to you guys about something specific and the question is film school, yes or no? And the reason why I want to talk about this is the world is changing so much, you know, growing up I feel like the only way to advance in life was you go to school and then in high school they ask you, well what do you want to do with your life and you say, well I want to be a, a nurse, so they say, okay you need to go to nursing school or you say I want to be a lawyer, so they say, okay you got to go to law school or you know, if you want to be a doctor, you got to go to med school, and I, I totally understand why there's certain professions that you just need to go to school. I really wouldn't want to go to a doctor that never went to school. So I definitely understand that there is a, a time and a place for formal education and for certain careers, but then when it comes to the whole creative world, it's it's a whole different ball game. And it's interesting though that the same kind of mentality that comes with law school or or med school or you know being a doctor or a lawyer. It can easily creep as well into the creative world. So when you're in high school, you know, you tell your teacher that I want to be a graphic designer or I want to be a photographer or I want to be a filmmaker. And of course, they're going to suggest to you, well, you should go to film school or you should go to graphic design school or photography school. And right now I'm thinking a lot about, well, is that actually the best route for you to get better as a photographer and as a filmmaker or a graphic designer or whatever it is in the creative world? Is formal education really the best? So I want to talk about this and get more into this, but first I'm going to go to the camera shop, I'm going to go grab the camera, and then we'll head back home to the office. Give me one second, just going to run inside and get the camera. Got myself the Canon USR and the drop-in ND filter. Really excited to try this out, but now let's get home to the office. Alright, so let's get down to the question. If you want to be a professional photographer or filmmaker, do you need to go to school? And in order for me to answer that question, I need to describe maybe two groups of people first in order for you to understand which group you fit into and what would be the best solution for you. I think the first group of people are the people who are passionate, but they're not the best self-learners, meaning they don't have a scheduled day where they wake up in the morning and they're just pumped to learn on their own. And instead, they kind of need a little bit of a kick in the butt to get out there and go and learn. And for these types of people, I really think school is great. And the reason why is that school creates this kind of formal environment for you where you go there, you're set up to learn, you have people around you kind of who are pushing you, and you have a teacher there who's gonna be teaching you, and it's gonna help you learn and grow. And as well, often if you go to film school or photography school, they have the equipment there for you to try out and learn, which is also very helpful. So that's the first type of people. If you're passionate, but maybe you're not the most self-disciplined, you're not the best at learning on your own, maybe school is good for you. But then there's the second group of people. If you're really passionate about your craft and you also you're very disciplined, you know, you wake up easily in the morning with a set day of, of tutorials that you're gonna watch and then you go out and shoot on your own and you're just really passionate about your craft and you really put the effort into it, I really don't think school is the best for you. I think there's so many other things that you can do than go to school in order to become a professional photographer and filmmaker. And that's why I wanna talk about five things that you can do if you wanna maybe skip out on the school part but you still wanna become a professional photographer and filmmaker. It's crazy because I was actually just checking out of curiosity, how much does film school actually cost? And I was looking at Toronto Film School and for a 12 month course, listen to this, a 12 month course is gonna cost you $22,980, so 23 grand. And for an 18 month diploma, it's gonna cost you $35,000. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong if you've gone to school and I'm sure it's helped, 
but I just think that nowadays maybe there's a better way to spend that $35 on investing on gear and as well on your own learning just without going to formal education. So that's why I wanna give you five tips on how you can invest in your own learning and your business so that you can become a professional photographer and filmmaker. And I think tip number one is watching tutorials. Honestly, there is thousands, probably, well, maybe not millions, but there's thousands of tutorials out there and there's so much content to devour and to learn from that there's no excuse to not learn nowadays for free. And I know for myself, when I first started out doing photography and filmmaking, I was constantly watching tutorials. And I remember even learning After Effects, we watched the video co-pilot Andrew Kramer's basic course, and it was so helpful. Without that course, I probably wouldn't have learned how to do After Effects, how to do all this tracking and matte tracks and all these crazy stuff. But with video co-pilot's free basic course, I was able to learn so much. It just requires you to be disciplined. And I remember when I was actually in formal education studying theology, I was sitting in class uh, and listening with one ear, but at the same time I had an earbud in the other ear and I was watching my computer tutorials, just learning about Lightroom, learning about Adobe Premiere, learning about different effects in After Effects. Everything that I've learned, I've learned pretty much through watching tutorials. And even nowadays, whenever I get stuck, I literally just write on YouTube how to do this, and at some point I'm gonna find a tutorial that's gonna help me. So tip number one, if you wanna invest in your own learning, watch tutorials. There's no excuses. There's so many tutorials out there to learn from. You just gotta work and find the right ones and watch them and get everything out of it. Tip number two, go out and shoot, create content. If you're a photographer or a filmmaker, you know, just come up with fun projects or ideas. Go out and shoot with your friends. Go shoot landscape photos. Go make films, you know, uh, maybe make a travel film or, you know, film a story about your friend or find an interesting idea or a subject and just film it. You know, you don't have to get paid in order to do a project. In the beginning, you're just gonna have to go and shoot and create content. And as you're shooting and creating content, you're gonna learn. You know, in the beginning, I did a lot of projects for free. And it was just because I was passionate about photography and filmmaking. And while I did those projects, I learned so much. And eventually, as I, you know, started creating more and more, people started noticing and then they're willing to pay for it. But you gotta start somewhere. You gotta start and just go out and shoot and create content. And that's gonna help you grow and become a professional photographer or filmmaker. Tip number three and how to become a professional photographer or filmmaker, go and find people who are like-minded and also just as passionate as you. Because there's something about going out on your own and shooting, but there's a whole other level when you're shooting with other people. It's like an environment just to challenge and inspire and to grow. And I kind of compare it to growing up when I used to do rollerblading or snowboarding. You know, if I was rollerblading and snowboarding on my own, you know, I would kind of just go and do the basic tricks and just do the things that I knew that I could do. But whenever I'd go out rollerblading or snowboarding with a group of friends, you kind of push each other to go forwards. You would, you know, one person would do a trick that maybe was a little bit crazy and you'd be like, man, if he did it, I can do it. I'm gonna go and try this trick. And you just pump each other up to go bigger and better and farther. And I think it's the same with photography. You know, whenever I'm hanging out with my photographer or filmmaker friends, we're always sharing tips and tricks that we've been learning lately. You know, we're showing each other the way that we would shoot it or the way we would film and just even watching how someone works, you can learn so much from that. So surround yourself with people who are better than you, maybe just as good as you are to learn from them and as well just be teachable, you know, don't think that you know it all, but be ready to learn from the people around you, from your friends who are also photographers and filmmakers. Tip number four in how to become a professional photographer and filmmaker, invest in gear. Eventually you are gonna have to bite the bullet and buy some gear. And if you don't end up going to formal education, take that $35,000 that you would have got from your parents to go to formal education and say, hey, I'm investing in my future business buy some camera, lenses, stabilizers, microphones, a good computer to edit on, and you're set. You know, it's obviously something that you're gonna have to do eventually. You know, whether you should buy it all at once or buy one at a time, that's up to you. For myself, I slowly built up my repertoire of gear. So, you know, in the beginning, I had a laptop, a camera, and a lens. And then from there, you know, maybe I started investing in some stabilizers, microphones, and I slowly built up the gear that I had. You don't need everything all at once. And uh, 
I think sometimes people buy it too quickly and then they're just having gear just sitting on the shelf. Whereas if you buy kind of one piece of gear at a time, learn how to use that well, master it, and then buy that next piece of gear. But eventually you're gonna have to invest gear into your business if you wanna become a professional photographer and filmmaker. And tip number five is invest in one-on-one -on -one mentoring or online education. You know, if you don't go do formal education, if you don't go to film school, that doesn't mean you can't pay for online courses. There are so many high quality online courses that you can find on Udemy or Skillshare where you can get more in-depth teaching. You know, YouTube channels and tutorials, they're great, but there's also online courses that go even more in-depth into just how to do business, how to do photography, how to do filmmaking, how to edit, how to use After Effects. There's pretty much an online course for everything but invest your money into online courses, but as well, one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And this is one thing that I really wanna talk about for a second, because for a long time now, doing this YouTube channel, you know, I've loved creating tutorials for you guys, and I think that's the best part about this YouTube channel, is that I can teach you guys about photography and filmmaking, but obviously the challenge is, is that when I create tutorials, they're still quite surface level because I'm trying to create content for beginners, but as well professionals and everyone in between. So it's gotta be quite broad and quite basic and surface level. And I can't really dive really, really deep into a certain topic or content. And as well, I'm a really big people person. I would love to talk with every single one of you guys one-on-one -on -one and hear your story, hear about your journey with photography and filmmaking, but it's just not possible through the YouTube channel. And that's why for the longest time, I've been thinking about a new resource that I wanna release, and it's one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Basically, I wanna do the tutorials on the YouTube channel, but as well, I wanna provide with you guys one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and that could be anything about photography, about filmmaking, about business, about life, you know, anything you wanna talk about, I'm down. And I know at this point, you guys are probably gonna ask, okay, well, how much does this cost? And of course, one-on-one -on -one mentoring is gonna cost. And the reality is, is just like you guys need to make a living, I need to make a living, but I would love to make a living by helping you guys get better and farther along in your photography and filmmaking journey. So the way I see that these one hour, one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions would go would be for the first 40 minutes, we would dive into three topics that you guys are interested in, You know, whether that be color grading or shooting photos at a wedding or editing in, in Adobe Premiere, whatever you have in mind, You know, whether you have questions about business, three topics that we talk about for 40 minutes and in the last 20 minutes, I would give you constructed feedback on your own work, on your own business, or anything that you'd want me to give you feedback on. And if you're right now writing off this idea of one-on-one -on -one mentoring session and paying money for it, I wanna challenge you by thinking, did you think that going to formal school was absurd? Were you willing to pay $35,000 to go to school and learn from a teacher in a classroom setting where it's not even that personal or one-on-one? -on -one? Whereas in a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session, you know, you're willing to pay some money and you're gonna get one-on-one -on -one personal lessons learning from a professional photographer and filmmaker and someone who's had a business for 10 years, who's grown a business from zero to where I am right now. So I think this is a great opportunity for you guys. A lot of you guys responded already on Instagram on the DMs and that really kind of just pushed me forward to think, man, I really gotta do this. I really am pumped to start this one-on-one -on -one mentoring program, one-hour sessions, 40 minutes learning about whatever you want, 20 minutes constructive feedback. Guys, if you're interested in that, I'm gonna link that below. Go to the Selfie site, you can buy the one-on-one -on -one mentoring session. We'll set up a time and figure out what topics you wanna learn about. And I think that this will help you a lot in your photography and filmmaking experience. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed these five tips on how you can invest in yourself to become a professional photographer and filmmaker, and as well, Please don't get upset, parents. I know you really want your kids to go to school, but the times are changing, and maybe formal school is not the best option for your kid because the creative world is a whole new world out there, and there's so much research out there to learn from. So I want you to think about that, and as well for you who maybe are just graduating from high school and you're thinking about what should I do, maybe think about taking a year off before you go to school and try out just investing in yourself, in your own business first, before considering going to school. All right guys, have a fantastic week. A lot of you guys are new to the channel, so make sure you hit the bell button so you get notifications when a new video comes up. As well, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and comment below about what you think about whether we should go to formal education or not. And if you haven't gone to formal education, what have you done to invest in your own learning? All right guys, have a fantastic week.